What's going on everyone? Welcome back to T3G. My name is Dalibor and today we are reviewing a budget, like ultra budget video slash photo camera coming up. Now I did do an unboxing of sorts, so here are my first impressions right out of the box. Here we go, right out the box, testing it out. I mean, not really any kind of lag. The video quality is pretty well lit here, but who the focus? The focus is not great though. Okay. So with the lens on, feels a little better. Feels like I've got much better focus. So definitely the lens is the way to go. But I mean, actually, this is not bad. I'm really hoping the audio is good. There's no, there's no mic input. Is there a mic input? There is. Wait, hold on. There is mic input. Is this, is, is this a worthwhile vlogging camera? <laughs> ah, maybe. I do also want to just touch base and say, I don't know what that's about. Oh, it's the light. Uh, I do also want to touch base and say that uh, the battery is like two thirds. This has got like three bars, so it's two thirds full right out the gate. It is gonna be interesting to see what this footage looks like though, because this is like a base, like ultra cheap card. Uh, I'm definitely going to be switching the card going forward. This was just right out the box. So it comes with the lens, comes in nice little felt packs, cables, an extra uh, lens cover. I think that's for the just body portion. Uh, some cables. I mean, pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. We'll see. We'll see how good this is. And I might... We'll see. I mean, dude, right now the video is solid. And if and this is persistent focus, hmm... This might even be better than the M10 because it's got persistent focus. Son of a bitch. So right out the gate, pretty quick to switch modes. Pretty quick to start up, like four seconds. So far, so good. I'm not really hating on this. Like with good lighting, so far, I mean, to me right now, it looks pretty good. And like, I don't know. Came with two batteries. What's this cable? Did it come? I think it came with HDMI. Oh my god, it came with HDMI. Did it come with... Oh damn, I was going to say, did it come with mic? Because that would just be tip-top. No mic though, that's fine. Power brick, of course. Paperwork. Yeah, it was way heavier than I was expecting because the lens is actually actual glass, you know? So, had some weight to it. I'm interested. I'm interested. And, and like, interesting, like, artifacting? This could be... This could be a good one. All right, here we are on the external microphone. Just did the, the lav real quick. I mean, right now, this, this is where it would be, right? Let's see what that sounds like. <sighs> Man, I've got, so far, I've got pretty high hopes for this. <sighs> it can only go downhill from here. There we go. Outdoors, vlog style. I got her on the tripod. <sighs> I'm on the internal mic. I didn't want to bring the other mic out. Let's see. That isn't that bad. Go potty. That is not bad. I mean, like, I mean, I, f I feel like. See, it's favoring the light. Cause I'm super dark, but it's not like hyper blowing out everything. Like, color gets a little weird when it does that, though. Okay, maybe it does blow it out. So we've got HDR turned on. The audio, surprisingly good. Super surprisingly good. It's a little high, like the, there's kind of a lack of low notes, but that's okay. That's a, that's a, that's like the in, exact inverse of that, uh, uh, where is it? I think it's right here somewhere. The, uh, the wireless loud that we had, that, that's, it's like the exact inverse. <sighs> Look, so far, so good. The video quality is a little choppier than I'd like. Uh, I'm also going to switch to 720 at some point and upscale it in post to see maybe if that helps because I feel like this is actually a 720 camera and it's upscaling and it just can't do as good a job. So I'm going to switch uh, in a second here to 720p. And this thing also works as a PC cam like pretty decently. So some options, some possibilities. Now, after that initial excitement, I went ahead and kind of dove deep, as far as you can, into the software and how it's set up. 
Now, I was contacted to review this camera, and I'll be honest, when I saw the photo, it brought back memories of a different conversation from another person that tried to contact me, and I did not have high expectations. I'm just going to put it that way. Uh, <laughs> I had extremely low expectations. Let's, I'm just going to be straightforward. We had extremely, extremely low expectations. Cover some of these basics. Single power button press. Pretty quick startup. It starts in photo mode. You do have to switch to video mode to do video. It's just got the three modes. It's got photo, playback, and then video. And here you're going to see all your settings, which can be accessed through the menu. And that's your resolution, loop recording, HDR, uh, motion detection, all that kind of stuff. Exposure. I have it set to 720 because I have a sneaking suspicion that the 1080 footage that you just saw, that is a upscale. So we're just going to go ahead and max it out, 720, 60 frames per second. Might even see if we can maybe play around with some slow-mo. We'll see what happens. Uh, the digital zoom, as far as I'm concerned, is useless, so these two buttons are kind of pointless. Uh, we have a hot shoe. thought that was a very strange choice. Uh, and then you have your photo slash start record button. Now, you do have the option to remove the ultra wide to get a macro lens. And I'm going to drop just a quick macro shot here. So... I mean, here, the table. There we go, right there. We'll do, do this guy. So I'm probably about an inch away. Oh, we have, <laughs> we have, uh, flash on for some reason so yeah I mean it's not not quite macro not my favorite thing the sensor itself is very very small I mean this is not a high-end product let's be serious right the sensor is very tiny I would say it's roughly the size of most phone lenses just a little bit bigger there we go the thing is this actually has weight to it because this lens is in a metal body so this is this lens is all metal including this part here uh, and then that is somehow attached to this very plastic body the, the actual camera body is very plastic these what look like dials uh, do nothing so they're just for visual reference. They don't do anything. They don't move. And then this actually has a pretty decent dust protector. Uh, but I'd even prefer to have it gone because it does have, of all things, a mic jack. And we'll look into that in a minute. You've got your micro, you, or I'm sorry, mini USB, not micro. Thought that was annoying. Just like this airplane. And your mini HDMI, which actually did come with an HDMI cable to connect to your TV. Nothing on the other side. The bottom is very interesting because we have our we have our memory card slot, which we're using the included memory card to see kind of the quality. So far, it's been good. That's why I didn't switch like I said I was going to. And then we have our battery compartment, which is kind of hard to open. It's got like a thing you pull back. And then it came with two batteries. They charged through the camera, and it was pretty quick to charge them, but they were already somewhat charged to begin with. You've got a speaker up top, and I can only find the one microphone down here. Kind of hard to see. There we go, right there. Uh, Possible, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think that there's another one. However, ironically, and now we're gonna switch. Oh, and of course, the swivel. The swivel is the other thing that's really important here. However, this actually has decent audio. Right now we are just on the camera audio, we're outdoors. You can see kind of the quality here is not the greatest as far as the blown out background, things like that. But I'll be very honest with you, for the price, you're not gonna get HDR, not like real HDR. So yeah, you're gonna have blown out highlights. It's trying to keep me in focus and I appreciate that. 
Now, indoors, it had great quality. It blew me away, honestly. Like, for what it was, compared to the fact that we, just a few weeks ago, were talking about an actual microphone that had much, much worse audio, this is not bad. This is not bad at all. And then we're going to switch back to the lav because uh, I just feel like it's going to be a better quality. And even though, even though, and I swear on everything, I checked the levels and the battery was full, the battery died on the recorder. So the lav is going through the camera and we're hoping for the best. I have tested it, so it does sound good so far. Uh, yeah. That was annoying, I'll be honest with you. The thing about it is, this is not a bad setup at all, guys. For, what is it, 160 bucks? I, I, I'm really finding it hard to say no to this. Especially with the microphone in. That is just a huge selling point. I, I was just at Target, and I was looking at a couple of the point-and-shoot cameras there, and they're 140, 150, 160, that kind of level. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like... You might get a marginally better image quality than this. You might get a little bit better balances, but you're not going to get audio in. And if you're using it for what I'm, what I'm thinking, you don't need the slightly better quality. Man, here's the thing. I actually, when I first grabbed this thing, I first put it on this tripod... And I was like, hey, this could be a decent vlogging camera. Hell, I can sell the M10, vlog on this. What's the loss? Like, where am I losing exactly? The M10 is constantly losing focus. This can't change focus. This is focused or it's not. So this distance, it's focused. It's as focused as it's going to get. It's not hyper crisp. It doesn't have... And I honestly don't think the M10 does a better job with the backgrounds. So I'm not losing in fact i'm gaining because the m10 doesn't have audio in and that was a 500 dollars camera i don't know why i'm keeping the m10 at this point compared to this and now now i'm just i'm on the lob right so it's you're like oh, you're gonna lob up every time you vlog that's what i was thinking too right how could i get around that oh yeah duh i could cold shoot mount the go micro and have an actual vlogging camera come on what am I losing? Am I missing something with this setup? This is fantastic. I mean, look, we're just going to stand up. We're just going to stand up. We're going to sit here. The rain stops so I can step out here, right? Again, it's not the greatest quality. I don't need the greatest quality. If I'm vlogging, I'm out and about. This is not bad. This is no worse than the M10. Come on. Like, am I serious? Like, could I have done this five years ago or whatever when I bought the M10? Absolutely not. We, there was nothing even close to this at this price with microphone in. Here's the thing, though. I can now. Why wouldn't I do this now? This is no worse than my phone camera. This is no worse than the M10. And for the phone, I'd have to get an adapter for audio in, and the M10 does not have audio in. <sighs> Guys, I... <sighs> I'm, I'm at a loss here. I'm at a loss as to why this is a bad idea. Because right now, this is a great idea. Just seriously, look, like this is not bad. And, and I'm like, all right, well, maybe people don't want to vlog with this, right? Even though right now, it don't look no worse than any other vlogging setup. It's got the swivel out screen. I mean, obviously, like I said, you're not gonna get like mad quality, right? I'm not. Obviously, when I switch indoor to outdoor, it's not ridiculous quality. You know, you've you got, obviously, shadows and highlights. It's going to take a second to readjust. It's not the best camera. But at 150 whatever dollars, it doesn't need to be. All it needs to be is the first camera. Someone's first camera. This is a great starting camera, especially with audio in. This thing, a $12 pop voice lav, or this $50 road, you've got a vlogging setup. You've got your first on-the-go shooter. You've got a run-and-gun setup that is decent for 200 bucks. I mean, come on. It's even got threads at 55 mil where you could put in D-filters. Come on. I just... 
don't know how this isn't a good idea. I don't. I don't know how this isn't a good idea. This is a fantastic idea. Now look, obviously, got some lens flare. That's what this, or this whole setup is right here. This whole shenanigan, right? If I move into it, color is going to be off. It's not the best camera, obviously. But for 150 bucks, it's doing a great job. Here, let's let's hear how this goes. Some airplane noises. You know, I low-key, just for this purposes, and obviously not considering all the negative things, I kind of missed last year, because there was like one of these an hour. I'm just saying, like, here, this thing's still recording. I don't know why I didn't turn it off. I'm just saying, guys, tell me this doesn't look like anybody else's vlogging setup. Just tell, tell me this doesn't look like a pretty decent vlogging setup. I mean, look, look we're just going to put it out here. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Solid. Solid. And then finally, with all that talk about comparing it to the phone, comparing it to the M10, I figured, why don't I just compare the three? All right, look. Not quite as good as I wanted it to be. Um, we're, we're, we're set up right now. I wanted to show, demonstrate. This is about as close as I can get them together. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to showcase the M10 versus the does this thing even have a brand whatever what the digital camera digital camera let's just <laughs> whatever whatever the brand is the, this one the, the one we're reviewing that's the here's the difference m10 digital camera obviously not as nice lighting not as nice not as rich colors for sure I means canon colors it's, you really can't mess with that so that's our main difference and here here's what i want to look at here is the distance, try to match it with the phone here. So roughly the, the front of the lens is the same distance as the phone lens, but here is the camera and here's the phone lens. So for me, this is a lot nicer, the camera, because so much more space. Look, you can see my whole arm, like, oh man, that's weird. Cause it does not flip. This flips. Oh, that's crazy. It doesn't mirror the picture. So that's the one screen I'm looking at that's backwards. Anyway. <laughs> oh my God. This has just been, this has been a joy to explore. <laughs> so here, here is, once again, M10, the camera, the phone. Same time, same, same. And here is the one thing I will say. This is a little easier to look at, right? I'm not looking that far off the lens to look at the screen. Same thing here, right? If I'm looking, I look like I'm basically looking just like a little towards the top of the lens. This, this is the lens, this is my screen. I'm looking off camera, no question about it. Here is the M10 audio, raw, uncut, nothing. Phone audio, raw, no changes. Here is the camera, <laughs> you can come up with a name for this thing. The camera audio by itself, no changes. And this is the uh, Rode Micro connected to the camera, no other changes. Obviously I'm recording with the zoom. That's where the baseline audio is and that's gonna be better regardless. I will agree that I was not necessarily considering everything when I was very excited about the camera in, <laughs> in, in the park. Uh, I was not taking everything into consideration. However, it's not that bad. For internal, it's not that bad. For audio inside, not bad. It's I think it's a little high. Um, I, I don't have, I have not found a way to turn it down. I have not found a way to change any audio settings inside the camera. So that kind of sucks. However, if you were to have a cold shoe mount microphone that does have a volume setting, that would resolve that issue. Unfortunately, the processor for the audio is still also not capturing low notes. So even with the Rode Micro, you're not really getting a lot of no low notes, which is unfortunate. And to my ear, this, the camera audio raw without the external microphone is actually even a little better. So to me, especially inside, very workable solution. Let's compare price points. On clearance, the M10 was $479, if I recall correctly. This thing was $1,000. This thing's 160 bucks. 
is this $900 better than this? I don't think so. I don't think it's $900 better. Is this $400 better, $300 better? Yes. However, the point here is, if you don't have $479, 170 is, you're not, you're not gonna be in a bad place with this. Now, on top of recording straight to the camera, there is one other thing I wanna demonstrate. Here we are on my laptop with the built-in camera. And the reason we're doing that is to show you the difference because this camera, this 120, I, I, I was looking at the numbers wrong, $120 camera is also a PC cam. Let's go ahead and switch over. I think instantly, instantly, we're getting a better quality. We're getting a little bit wider angle, more light for sure. I mean, just generally speaking, this is a better look. I think right there, you're getting $120 value. Because for $120, you're going to get a webcam that's probably about this price, and it's only a webcam, and it's only attached to your computer via USB, whereas this has all the other features as well. So ultimately, in just a quick word, this is a great, like a absolute great starter camera. There's just no question about that in my mind. I think if you are just trying to start, just trying to get your foot in the door, just experiment a little bit even, 120 bucks, you're not losing a lot of money for something that you may not fully be invested in yet. And if you find that you like it, you can maximize this. You can get the most out of it. You can use it for streaming. You can use it for video. You can use it for photo and still get decent looking quality before you spend 400, 600, 800, a thousand dollars for a good or decent camera. There's been a lot of talk out here in these streets, in these internet streets about, oh, you need to spend $600. The M50 is the entry point. The M50 is a great camera. Hottis uses it. He loves it. I love it. It is still $650 to $700, depending on if you're getting on a sale. That's a lot of money. No matter how you slice that, that's a lot of money. But you can pull $120 plus shipping if you don't have Prime. You could pull that by selling a few things at the house. You know what I mean? You got a few things that you can get rid of and make $120. If that's the absolute, if you're like, man, I really want to get into photo and video but I just do not have the money, I don't have a cell phone with a, with a camera, then this is the step. This is the entry point. You have expandability because you have the microphone jack. You have the, the, the front facing screen, which is huge. I mean, just huge. That alone will just let you get used to speaking to a camera because you'll see what you look like. You'll see kind of how the world is gonna see you. Granted, mirrored, which is weird and it annoys, it annoys me, but it's there regardless. Is this a top-end camera? Absolutely not. This isn't even, I would say, a mid-range camera. This is absolutely an entry-level camera, and I think that's exactly what it's priced for. I think with this, with a tripod, with the, even specifically the Rode Micro, which is a $50 uh, cold shoe mount mic, you're still getting out with a full vlogging kit, a full recording kit, if you will, for under $200. That's hard, that's hard in any other configuration. That's really, really hard. Even if you were to pick up like a decent action camera, they still start at the decent price point at about 120 to 150 bucks. And they're even more limited. I think this will get you the necessary skills to get used to functioning with a camera like this, with a lens, with an audio jack, with the flip out screen, just the whole experience is kind of shaped to be your first step into the DSLR mirrorless game. And I think that's fantastic. I think the audio quality is surprisingly good, especially indoors, obviously outdoors, we had quite a bit of noise. It was windy, but, this, but that still is a factor. But indoors, solid quality, like this is not bad at all. Really, without beating a dead horse, as it were, I think it is an absolute buy. I think I'm gonna probably save it as maybe like a mobile on-the-go vlogging rig, just in case I want something different than the phone. I still feel like this is better than the phone. 
It's weird, I know, but I actually do think it's better. Like the only benefit I get from the phone is that it's a little smoother, but it's way more cropped in. I have way less space around me. It's just, it's harder to navigate and I have to have it farther away. Whereas this, I'm two feet, not even two feet away from the camera and I still got plenty of space. I mean, like if I really wanted to, this is, this is I feel where I would be if I had the phone at the same distance. And that's ridiculous. As always, if you are interested, link down below, it is an affiliate link. And if you use that, I appreciate you. It does help the channel out. And yeah, I've got nothing else to say. Surprisingly glowing review for a very budget camera option. I, I, I'm truly blown away by the price point and the feature set. If you got any questions, drop them down below. I'm happy to test this in any conditions you want to see what it can do. I, I'm sure there's things I haven't even thought of as how to use it. So please drop any questions down below and I will see you in the next one.